Hello, all donation friends. I'm Kathy Hesmer, and I am a writer. I'm going to share with you a short memoir that I wrote about our two beagles, Calvin and Susie. But first, I should let you know that I wrote it with appreciation and great respect for the two legendary sprinters, Jesse Owens and Usain Bolt. And you'll see why. Um, it's called Photo Finish. Long ago, when they were young, we often took our beagles walking in a wooded park, rolling with ancient sand dunes and laced with Spanish moss. Midway on a favored trail, there was a boardwalk that stretched out over a wide marsh, its dark water surrounded by tangled pines and hollies. Nearly always empty and protected by trusted rails to prevent beagles going overboard, we would free them to race to the end of the wooden path. Unhooked from their leads, straining against our hold on their collars, they trembled. We steadied them, setting their noses side by side, for a fair start was our nature, if not theirs. Then it was ready, set, go, and like Owens and Bolt, neurons fired, legs sprang, and they shot headlong towards the finish line. Our two hounds ran, bodies low to the wooden deck, Paws scrambling, scraping, scratching, white-tipped tails flashing. They flew to the end of the boardwalk, as if rabbits, not dragonflies, waited. Sunning turtles lined up like doughboys' helmets on a log, splashed, diving to a muddy retreat at the pup's photo finish. The End Hello, good morning, Old Donation family and friends. It is a blessing to be with you today uh, as we continue in the season of Epiphany on this very special day, Super Bowl Sunday, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, and so uh, as we go through the service, uh, you can pray for your team, whoever it is, uh, and we will be, uh, we'll be joining with you uh, in enthusiasm and prayer. So... Um, so anyway, today we're going to begin our worship of God, not of the <laughs> Buccaneers or the Chiefs, but we're going to begin our worship of God with the acclamation and then the hymn, Blessed Assurance. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom now and forever. Amen. Lost in his love, 
give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips. And our, our mouth shall, shall proclaim your praise. praise. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And now we'll sing, O oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. reading a reading from isaiah chapter 40 verses 21 to 31 have you not known have you not heard has it not been told you from the beginning have you not understood from the foundations of the earth it is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them calls them all by name because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. The word of the Lord. We'll sing, Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Master. 
A reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapters 1, verses 29 through 39. After Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began serving them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of the Lord. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts find favor in your sight. Amen. So long before I had children, I used to be a morning person. In college, when my course load was particularly heavy, I would go to sleep around 8, wake up at 2, and walk over to the nearby Denny's to study over breakfast. I found that I did my best writing then in those hours between two and four. After my sophomore year though, I decided to take a year off from school. It was 2008 and it seemed like a good idea to take some time in the middle of the Great Recession to stand still. It was a time of upheaval when people were losing jobs and homes, banks were falling under and Wall Street was being occupied. I moved back home to Colorado Springs to practice my writing and to make a bit of money to save. I worked at a gas station during the night shift. Now some, uh, it was a really interesting place to work at. You see all sorts of manners of people there. But the best part was in the early morning hours, like after I had mopped the floors and cleaned the bathrooms and put in new like soda syrup and restocked the cigarettes, I would sit behind the register just out of the way so the cameras couldn't see me. And I would write on scraps of receipt paper. My poems and short stories were wrapped in scrolls held together with rubber bands. Now, there is a particular quality to the air 
in between the late night crowd of high schoolers trying to avoid the police that just broke up their party and the early morning airmen who came by to fill their thermoses with coffee on their way to Cheyenne Mountain. You witness the world transitioning to the next day. And I would say that it's a kind of stillness because it is quiet, but the stillness is a thin layer. There seems to be a lot of movement underneath it, just waiting to erupt. It reminds me of walking during a heavy snowfall at night where the, sound, where the snow absorbs the sound so you can see traffic, but you can't really hear it. They sound, it sounds distant, and the crunch that your boots make as you walk is the loudest sound. There's a heaviness in the air, and it feels close. For me, that is grounding, and it makes me think of God. Now, when I wrote during this early, dark time, it felt as if God and I were the only beings in the world. And I used my pen to traverse the landscape of my heart, searching for where I should go next. I don't think that Jesus found the world so still in the early morning dark either. At least the gospel writers certainly didn't. Mark is famous for peppering his text with his favorite phrase, and immediately. But apart from Mark's breakneck pace, Jesus goes out in the morning when it is still dark to a deserted place. Now, Pastor Mike Graves points out that dark in Mark, in Mark's gospel, is a loaded term. It's used later when the religious leaders hand Jesus over to Pilate. And it's used to describe the time when the women go off to the tomb where Jesus was buried. Likewise, desert, the desert is where John the Baptist appears and where Jesus is tempted. So when we picture Jesus praying here in this dark, deserted place, we would do well to see him searching. After all, it's not difficult to see him overwhelmed by the number of people who need healing and the crowd gathered around the door to Simon's house. I believe he must have been searching for grounding in that dark, deserted place. And I think he found it. Because Jesus is unfazed when Simon, after hunting for him, like comes up and is exasperated, out of breath, and says, everyone is searching for you. Like, where'd you go? But Jesus doesn't even address Simon's concern. He simply states what he's going to do next. He won't be confined to this locale or to the crowd or even to the expectations of his anxious disciples. He knows what he's here to do. But we can go easy on Simon. I mean, after all, the first thing that he saw Jesus do was cast out a demon after teaching in the synagogue and heal his mother-in-law. I mean, it makes sense that someone who was called to fish for people would search for folks suffering from demons and disease. I mean, after seeing those miracles, what else could there be? I think that Simon's mother-in-law would have under, well, did understand, though. Because after Jesus touched her hand and the fever left, she immediately began to serve them. And I know, guys, I know. I, too, roll my eyes out loud at the thought of women subservient to men. However, if we look at the ancient Greek, and heads up, I will tell you, I don't know ancient Greek, but I do know this word to serve is diakoneo. And I know this word because it's the root of the word for deacon. She seems to innately know that Jesus' ministry depended upon servant leadership, that he is the one who came to serve, not to be served. And her work here points the way to the early church, how they served one another in their homes. It's a sacrificial work of the baptized community in which we share Christ's presence and activity of making things whole. Now, like the early church, we have moved from our public spaces of worship to our homes. And we're now searching for the sacred in our daily lives, watching stream surface, services from our sofas and our pajamas, or while we do our dishes. And serving one another has become more difficult, but not impossible. An anonymous, anonymous spiritual writer in the fourth century wrote about the children of God being led by the Spirit invisibly in their hearts. 
They mourn and lament over their fellows and pour forth prayers for the whole human race. Because if it were possible, they would clasp and embrace all of humankind without discrimination, good and bad alike. And it's a need that we all feel right now in this time when we're, when it's impossible even to be in a crowd without, for fear of either spreading or catching a virus. And honestly, I don't really have the answer as to how we should do ministry during this time of COVID. But I think we're all trying to figure it out. We're all working on it. We're all trying to solve it. I had never really contemplated ministry, doing ministry before with social distancing. I mean, when I was in, ordinate, in the process for ordination, I had always assumed that ministry would be hands-on with lots of people around. I mean, after all, when I was doing laundry love, I folded clothes. When I fed the unhoused, I would carefully stack deli meat and cheese and tomato and lettuce into a nutritious sandwich for the folks that I shook hands with on the street. Even when I worked at the gas station, I served the folks who bought a carton of cigarettes every few days, or the woman who fills up a gallon jug with Dr. Pepper at 6 a.m. every morning, or the man who bought $200 worth of scratch cards every night, the soldiers who preferred to drink the burnt and bitter coffee left on the burners all day. I even served the two men who broke every single squeegee, beating up each other up during a fit of road rage. They're small, small acts, truly. But I think in this time, in this early morning dark, when we know that we are in this time of transition, where folks are getting vaccinated, but it's still hard to, see, to contemplate the time when everyone is vaccinated, especially when just this past Thursday, 5,000 people died from the virus. But it's important to remember that even the smallest light is blinding in the darkness. I think that's a paraphrase of Dumbledore. And so that's what I hope you take with you from today, is that these small, small acts are incredibly bright and they light the way, the way that we are trying to walk. And remember that everywhere you go in the world, you are the location of the incarnation. Amen. We will continue with the uh, prayers of the people and um, as Genevieve makes her way back. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord. Keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. And we invite your prayers and intercessions silently aloud or typing them into Facebook um, so that the whole community can join with you. And we will include those who are on this, the Old Nation prayer list, especially Jess Martin, Trip Wilson, Cindy Bixby, Tila fam Teeling family, Arden Reed, Cinda O'Connor, Eve Potit, Jorge and Maria Sayers, Meg Pritchard, Carvel Taylor, Jessica Williamson, Jane Rodriguez, Lee Putzig, Stan Hopkins, Cliff Lewis, Ann Hawkins, the people of our local nursing homes, especially Atlantic Shores, Bay Lake, and Westminster Canterbury, Hope Matthews, Diana Skipper, Alan Joyce and Brenda Walker, Brian Hunt and Heather Hang Hunt, Brian Miller and his brother Ray, Brian Crawford, Meredith Guzman, Julius Ventura, Howard Hanchy, Forrest Newhall, Linda Erickson, Amy, Pam, Elizabeth Malcolm, Ruth Ann, Donna Blankenship Hudgens, Carol Hart, Bill and Gloria Thompson, Joe Hughes, Martha Gentry, Frank, Kelly, Gabe, and Gio, Alan and Carol Ormond, all students and teachers in school, whether at home or virtually or in person, for their parents and for the victims of racial injustice in our land with an end to violence, for God's vision of a beloved community to become our vision for this world, for peace to have hold and to endure, for deployed personnel everywhere, for medical and emergency personnel, for scientists working on solutions to COVID-19, particularly the new strains and variants, and for those working on distribution of the vaccines, and for the courage for all to be able to do the right thing. We pray also for our president, our Congress, our, Congress, our governor, and all mayors. We pray for good wisdom and judgment and courage to do the right thing. And we have some birthdays, I think, also. We do. We have three birthdays to oh, celebrate good. today. Good. Dot Tripeson, Kel Perry, and Rich Kerr. All right. All right. Yes. Well, so some great yes, people happy to birthday. celebrate. Yes, happy Happy birthday to all of you. I know it can be a great day on Super Bowl Sunday to have a birthday. <laughs> so we ought to have good food at least, right? That's right. And we hope that God continues to bless you on this day and on the year to come. Okay. And now we'll continue with an act of spiritual communion. Let us pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the bread and wine of our table. I love your presence and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Trusting in your promise to be with us in our prayers, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And now we will sing How Great Thou Art.
into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Make no peace with oppression. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and always. One uh, announcement or two just before we uh, take off and get dismissed. Um, number one, this week you will see a bell ringer come out by email and it will get mailed to those who don't receive our emails. Um, and that will have a lot of information about Ash Wednesday and Lent. Ash Wednesday is only a week and a half from now. And so uh, we are making plans for imposition of ashes here at the church at two different times during the day on drive-by basis. And we are also going to distribute communion kits to you as well as have a streamed service. So you'll see details in your bell ringer this week. Um, and also uh, there'll be Bible study on Thursday for the Gospel According to Mark, which we will we'll finish up. Uh, that program. And what other announcements? And today is the last day to, um, to sign up for some cookie making kits for the kids in your lives on Thursday evening at uh, 6 p.m. We'll gather on Zoom to, uh, to make cookies together and for our kids and for parents and anyone who wants to join to just spend some time and hang out together on Zoom. So... Okay. Uh, that'll be this Thursday. Make sure to sign up today if you want a kit uh, made for you or for your kids. Okay, then uh, that's enough for right now. Other than uh, go whoever you're rooting for. <laughs> <laughs> the, pa the Patriots are not playing, so I don't have to have a, a favorite. And uh, I have, I have torn, torn allegiances to both Kansas City and Tampa Bay. So, good. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 See you soon. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you and make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you.
Oh